Welcome to the Doug and Mike Show. I'm Doug. Hey, and I am Mike. And we have real conversations with real people. Today we have a special guest. Mike, who is it? Yes, we in fact do. We have uh, we've traveled across uh, the United States, across uh, several time zones uh, today to grab Frank Lima, uh, fellow brother firefighter in LA City, Los Angeles, and uh, he is the also the tenth uh, district vice president for the IAFF. Frank, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, thank you so much, Mike, uh, Doug. I really appreciate this opportunity to speak with you and your Florida firefighters and appreciate all you do. I know you're both, um, uh, you know, Doug, you're out of uh, Broward County, work with Walt, Emeritus uh, for your service in the DVP of the FPF and Mike for all you do up in Tallahassee and, and your, your time with the FPF as well. So I appreciate the opportunity. I'm humbled to be with you. Awesome, Frank, man. Well, you're listen, still, you're we're, still on the job, right, Frank? I am, yes. You're, I just, you're still uh, running fact, calls. Talk, talk to us. In fact, yes, guys um, are still working, Doug. I know D- Doug's Doug is enjoying the day off. He doesn't even know what shift it is, Frank. So don't don't let him fool you. All right. Um, yeah, I I'm blessed to. I, I started out pretty early. I actually took the test at Hollywood High School, the, the Hollywood California um, High School, and and when I was 18 years old, I got hired when I was 19. You know, wow. I, I got 29 years on the job. Just started my 29th year of service. Oh wow! So. Um, yeah, Congrats. I, I um, still active. I, I work, I work a uh, shift uh, on Saturday coming up in South LA, and you know, find that mix of union leaders of of being in the station, not forgetting where you came from, not forget who you're voting for, not forget who's paying the freight to watch out for them, but also, you know, if you spend too much time in the firehouse, you're not you're not doing it justice for your members on the union side. So this whole balance that we have to to, to deal with. Yeah. <clears throat> Frank, Doug and so, I started doing this a, a few years ago. I'm gonna I'm gonna step uh, step right in here, uh, Doug. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, but nice, I did want nice block there, Mike. This is typically how it goes, Frank. If you're wondering right now, thinking what you've gotten yourself into, it's usually a lot of you know just back and forth here. Uh, but but seriously, Doug and I got into this uh, several years ago, really because we love telling stories and we love talking about our past and what you know, finding out about the why. Uh, our, our guys and gals do what they do. And, you know, we're a humble bunch. I mean, we don't, um, you know, we don't like that uh, camera in front of us. And uh, I did PIO for a little bit in my department. You know, it's like, you know, you look around for somebody to grab for an interview and they all scatter, you know, or you go to a class and they all sit in the back of the room, right? The bravest men and women. And, uh, but, but then in times of, of, uh, of being recognized, we don't particularly care to be recognized all the time. So, you know, Doug and I said, all right, well, we're firefighters. We're part of the a tribe. Um, we're going to uh, we're going to pull people onto the camera, pull people in front of the microphone and talk about their journey, their life, their history, what they do, what they've done. And, uh, you know, we, we've been to so many funerals. Uh, all of us have where, you know, you you have you have the family talking about and our friends and our brothers talking about the life and the journey. And it may be the first time you heard those stories. So our goal was. Let's get out there and talk about and tell stories before uh, we have to all gather uh, at our at our uh, church for for those services. So uh, we got you on. Uh, so in that uh, in that spirit, uh, Frank, tell us about like the early beginnings, uh, where you grew up, kind of some of those uh, early parts of your life that got you uh, got you started. Yeah, you know, if, if I may, I, I before I answer that, I, I'd be kind of remiss to not just really thank you, you, Mike and Doug again for this opportunity. I know the 12th district, uh, specifically Florida, who, who I'm, I know I'm talking to, uh, comes with a rich line of uh, leadership. I knew Dominic uh, Barbera. Um, I was blessed to work on the executive board with Larry Osborne and I'm really blessed to, to continue to work with um, Walt Dix, you know, in the 12th district on the board. In fact, Walt's been a very big supporter of mine We've driven on a road trip and starting with the South Florida Council of Professional Firefighters, um, you know, all the way up to Jacksonville and, and into Savannah and Charleston, you know, um, uh, along this journey. Um, I know Adonis Garcia, many years, you know, um, we go back as dear friends out of Miami Beach, but, you know, your FPF, it, to, to have the endorsement of the FPF was a uh, a shot in the arm to my campaign. You know, I can't thank Bernie, Rocco, you know, the executive board enough for the convention, you know, from 
you know, from Suncoast to Hollywood to Jacksonville, like I said, you have a great history of leadership. And, um, you know, one thing that we really have in common that I think is, um, is, is really the size of our states um, and, and, and the, the, the disaster relief component that is such a common denominator, although different disasters, our, our members are in need, you know, from floods to wildlife Absolutely, fires. Yeah. And, and you have Eric Chudzik out there who is one of four um, people in a national disaster relief go team. And it was great to have Eric out here in California. When we, you know, we had, took, I took him and got him a little excited. We have about 70 mile an hour winds with about 150 foot uh, flame lengths fire jumping about a 10 lane freeway and right in front of his oh, eyes. Yeah. So, I'm sure so, you had him puckered up a little bit on that one. Yeah. So it was good. So, so I, I kind of would be remiss if I didn't even start with, with saying thanks to, you know, uh, you know, everybody in Florida for the support. I'm very humbled and, and I look forward to a long lasting relationship, strong uh, moving forward. Now with my background, um, I grew up in a very, uh, very working class neighborhood in North, Northeast Los Angeles County. And, um, you know, lived in a, had a long driveway with three, three houses. We, we lived in the back house and, and um, grew up, grew up Catholic, grew up, um, you know, with a, with a working class family. My mom went back to school when I was in third grade to finish her high school uh, graduation, later became a nurse, a uh, unionized nurse. Um, I ended up marrying uh, a unionized nurse and we have four kids, um, three of our own. We adopted one. We were foster parents for a short, short time. Uh, all of our kids are 18 and older, um, one of which is in the army, two are in college, and my daughter is uh, going to be starting law school here, um, probably to be a labor attorney, as all four of those kids grew up in a union hall. They understand if uh, the UFCW or the Teamsters are holding a picket sign, you know, not a lot of kids today know about that organized labor, but my kids certainly, certainly do. And, um, you know, just been blessed to, to, to grow up in a state where um, we, we do have a right to sit at the table. You do have collective bargaining rights. And, and as I've gone on this journey, as I've driven through Savannah and Charleston and no one um, and, and representing Arizona and scratching my head going, how come a Scottsdale firefighter does not have a collective bargaining agreement? And that's what really dove me into to help with, you know, the Southern Fed and, and dive in and ask the why questions. And we're at a critical time in this in this country where we have to have collective bargaining rights for every firefighter in this country. So that's a little bit of my kind of background, you know. So, so do you have um, do you have any family that were in the fire service or you're the first? I was the first, you know, when I took the oath to come on the job, I had uh, I had no no family on the job. Um, one of my really my mentor to get me on the job was Rudy Martinez. He uh, lives in El Sereno, still lives in the same house to this day. And um, he was my little league coach. So one day, you know, there were no cell phones back then. We started raining at one of the practices and he piled, you know, probably something that the child protective services would be, be called. <laughs> he jumped in the back of his pickup truck, you know, uh, you know, 10 or 12 of us. And he drove to his firehouse in Lincoln Heights, fire station one, where I, I don't know, I was maybe 11, 12 years old at the time. And I remember walking in and just looking at these poles and, you know, big apparatus and, and the camaraderie. And I never seen anything like that. So, I, so when I went home, I told my mother, I said, I'm going to be a firefighter one day, mom. And then later, because we were friends with the Martinez family, I had, I had called Rudy and I ended up being coming, we called it out here an explorer scout or, you know, kind yep. of volunteer. And I went there do, during my high school years, spent many nights, which probably kept me out of trouble. You know, on Friday nights, I, I chose to go to the firehouse and, 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 and get that. And, um, next, you know, I took the test when I was 18 by, by the, by the help and the push of uh, Rudy. So somebody, you know, that, that really mentored me and made a difference in my life. And I think in the fire service, if, if all of us could, could, could do that to just one person, make a difference. That's, that's what, that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's, it's funny. We were just one of our guys retired and we were talking about, you know, the, the making a difference and sp inspiring the guys, motivating the guys. And, you know, one of uh, one of uh, the things we talked about was you, you don't know when people are watching. You don't know who's watching. You don't you you may assume that uh, just the ones that are calling you and asking you questions and that are showing up to everything are the only ones that care, are the only ones that are watching. But uh, that's not the case. I mean, so many of, of our great uh, union leaders uh, have told those stories about just being in just being, uh, you know, around and watching and being inspired. And at some point, 
you wake up one day and you, you're called to action and you do it and you put your name in to be vice president of the local or the secretary or shop steward. And uh, so it, it's awesome. And just hearing you, um, you know, uh, spout those names, you're talking about Larry Osborne and, and Walt Dix and, and Dominic and all these guys that Doug and I have been around that are in our backyard. Uh, you know, it's so neat to hear somebody, you know, a uh, thousand miles away who has, such 3, a close relationship <laughs> yeah three thousand miles away who has yeah. uh a relationship with them and has been inspired by them and the you know we i i see that you know those years uh early on i you know hell i just thought larry osborne was uh, a jacksonville guy and he was just uh you know that was his uh reach uh and then i and then you later find out as you travel and go to conventions that you know this this man had influence and, ch- and impacted change across the continent and uh, and is is working in other states and areas. And, you know, you mentioned uh, Chudzik and the guys in the state that do the disaster work. I mean, it's just incredible to think that, you know, we're all teamed up and band together uh, making this big change. And and that's the beauty of the IAFF and this union. Um, So that's my next question for you is, you know, what is your vision? What is your, um, what motivates you? What are you looking forward to as the, the next, secretary treasurer for for our great iff well that's a that's a great question and and i think um you know i've been asked um along the way you know one of those questions that kind of hey when did you start preparing for gst and you know maybe my my answer has been probably 17 years ago 18 years ago when i was the youngest uh truck captain ever promoted in the history of our Los Angeles Fire Department. And just by way of, um, of, of, of me flying through the ranks in, in, in the LAFD, you know, I was on a promotion pop and fi- you know, a couple years as a firefighter, several years driving the truck as an apparatus operator, as on an engine captain, kind of lieutenant for a um, you know, very short period. And then right back to the truck, my comfort zone for all you uh, truckies out there. <clears throat> um, and and I was, as I was doing that, I was always a staunch union supporter. I was always, you know, still, you know, um, a station steward early on, right off, right off for probation, always involved, always walking the districts. And, um, uh, you know, you know, getting involved and getting elected on the executive board, becoming a trustee, you know, kind of working my way into before I got a VP and stuff. But um, my answer is when I made truck captain, our bargaining units, the way they were determined back in the 70s, is that one more promotion for me, and I would have been out of the IAFF. So wow. if we had battalion chiefs, I'd probably, in, in the IAFF, I'd probably be a battalion chief right now. But just the way it's laid out and every, every local is different, um, sure. I actually chose to never take the battalion chief's exam because that's when I really dove in to, to say, hey, I'm gonna, I want to do IAFF leadership. There's too much injustices out there. <clears throat> um, the, on, on the global part of history, I got very involved in our AFL CIO and, and, and learning about, you know, other, other unions and the injustices that we see, how, how, uh, you know, especially in the disciplinary process in our department back in that day where, where, you know, if you were kind of in the good old boy club, you, you, you know, if you, if you did the same offense, you didn't really get, you know, maybe you got a reprimand, but, but if you weren't in the club, you, you got a 10 day suspension. And that really drove me to see, Hey, the, 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 the differential treatment. So, you know, I got deeper involved and, 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 you know, ro- you know, rose through the ranks in, in, in local 112 United firefighters, of Los Angeles city, uh, a local that I was very proud to uh, become a president. Then I worked my way into uh, uh, becoming a DVP like both of you have in our CPF was version of FPF. And I walked the halls in Sacramento, like you do in Tallahassee and, and then became a, a DVP. And, and really learned the complexities of, of the IFF. And I really was a little disheartened when I got in there in the sense of, of coming from a big local, you really don't use the IFF that much because you kind of have your own operation. But I really learned the services and, and, the, and, the, and the technicalities and, and you know, the multiple pension plans and, and all the departments that we have and things like that. So you know, looking into this GST thing, uh, a spot came up, um, something, you know, I had considered many years ago and, and the way things worked out in our, our politics and our IFF, it was, um, I said, Hey, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. And, um, 
there's a lot to do. You know, I, um, I have, I have visions to bring, you know, this, I, this, this GST position, some may tell you that it's all about having some type of a financial degree as an AA sitting in front of a, a calculator with a pencil in your ear all day. And it couldn't be farther from the truth. You know, um, GST position is a leadership position. And I've, I've been the acting GP many times, you know, I've kicked off the U S conference of mayors in Honolulu for fire ops 101, or I've, I've, I've led disaster relief incident command posts while dealing with the line of duty death. And I've always represented the IFF, you know, with dignity and, and, and in, 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 a, in a dignified manner that, um, you know, helps us out, but it's about bringing trust back. I'm a person that, that is running on a platform of unity. I have a, a broad financial background, um, which uh, I, I ran a uh, $30 million healthcare trust, self-insured at local 112. You know, I, I managed office professional employee international union staff and managed their defined benefit pro pension program, their defined contribution program, their uh, negotiated a collective bargaining agreement under the National Labor Relations Act in the private sector. And this is the same local, this is the same un international union that we have office staff at the IFF. So I know how to manage um, civilian employees, motivate them well, because they're going to be the link between the services that the IFF provides in our local presidents and things like that. I like to say I call balls and strikes. I'm not a front stabber, but I will be a, a watchdog there who, who has, um, you know, not just voted with the pack all the time, who's gone against the current GP, who's gone against the current GST, and not on a personal issue, just, 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 you know, I try to take each motion like it, like an umpire at a baseball game calls balls and strikes. And, and that's where it is. So I look to, um, you know, bring a lot to it. I, our, our, our mantra in our campaign is unite, fight, organize, organizing is something that I've done. And, and, and I think organizing is something that, that we can't pound into labor leaders enough. Cause if you're a hundred percent membership, then you got to organize to keep it that way. If you're 90% membership, you got to organize to get to 100%. Um, combination fire departments, you know, those, you know, volunteers converting, we have to pick, pick them up. We have a, a lot of uh, opportunity to organize up in the Quebec area, up in Canada. So um, that falls directly under, under the uh, GST. I'm the only one in this race that's on the executive board and without a doubt, do not have to hit the pause button on day one. Can, can go to work and can be a, a, a definite asset to our district vice president because you'll have a GST who's actually done the job of, of a DVP, kind of like, you know, maybe like a firefighter going through the ranks of an engineer and whatnot. So I'm excited. I, I, I'm, I'm looking to innovate. I'm looking to um, uh, put, I'm putting together a transition team of people that I'm meeting along the way from blue local states, from red states, from the largest local that has an operation with a CPA in it and, and, and the technicalities all the way to those, to those 10 member locals in a rural area that I know that their finances are in a briefcase in the trunk of the treasurer's car and they only come out on the coffee table at their house or on the kitchen table at the firehouse. So that's gonna be my spectrum of people um, try to avoid embezzlements, you know, educate on the, from the top down and, 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 and build a consensus. We are divided. I'm one that brings unity and, and, and I will do that. And I will always make sure those books are handled. I bring a political influence to this position and um, ready to, ready to fight. Frank, one of the, like one the, of the, I'm, I'm going to jump in, Mike. I'm going to yeah. jump in. Okay. Can I, can I have Just a little it. bit it is the Doug and Mike <laughs> show, okay? You think you think I was the bigger of the two of us? Okay. So, anyways, Frank, you know, you you hit on a nugget that that I truly appreciate. The fact, even behind you, you have the because uh, I can read Spanish. I'm bilingual, um, but I'll I won't, I'll keep it in English for this broadcast. But, anyways, um, that you know, you guys walked with the teachers. You guys supported the teachers. You mentioned the AFL-CIO, not everybody embraces the AFL-CIO, but, you know, share, share with me some of your experience with that and also the fact that, you know, um, we, can't, we can't get separated, like, you know, in, in the capital, they try and pit, you know, one against the other. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, on, on the... You know, let me see on, on the sign. I think you're looking at this one. The Estamos yep. con los maestros. That was the um, 
the United Teachers of Los Angeles happened to be on a big strike and it was a nationwide deal and, and essentially rotated from, from big city to big city across across America at, at the time, red for ed and all that. And the timing couldn't have been better because I had been, you know, out there for probably a week and a half in the rain um, with, with our teachers as I'm on our AFL-CIO Los Angeles County Federation Labor Executive Board. I think it's the largest labor council in America or, or second largest. And um, we happen to have the ALTS conference, the Affiliate Leadership Training Symposium in January of 2019 in Los Angeles. And, mm -hmm. and about- I know, we remember this well, don't we, Doug? And, and about, uh, you know, probably a quarter mile, half a mile we were staying from, from the education department. And we organized something and it, and it got traction at my level and it ultimately made it up its way up to AFT president, Randy Weingarten and general president Shaperger. And it was like, okay, we're doing this and, and we're going to get up. And, and, and the GP said, hey, we'll never have our guys get up in the morning and, and our members and our brothers and sisters won't get up. And the solidarity that was done that day, and I was blessed to be out at the front of that line, marching and yelling and, you know, driving that, you know, pulling that fire engine in and, 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 and to have 1800 members get up in solidarity with teachers that they don't even know. That's what it was about. What moved me the most, uh, Doug, was when people left that ALTS conference after sitting there for, for three days in, in various classes, um, they go, you can't teach that. You can't teach that, 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 that mem teachers were crying when they saw shirts that said, hey, Miami Beach, Ohio, and, and these firefighters are from all over the country, from Canada and, and, and Manitoba and Quebec that are walking because they care. But I've had, um, you're right, the AFL-CIO can be very touchy. We have some uh, local affiliates that aren't a part of that at a lower level or at a state level. I always encourage it. You know, there's, there's a lot of relationships that local leaders have to have. One is, you know, obviously with your executive board, then with your membership, you have to have a relationship there. You have to have a relationship with your fire chief and management. You have to have a relationship with your elected officials. You have to have a relationship with other IAFF locals. And then ultimately, you have to have that relationship with others because you never know when you're going to need them. And, and, and it just drives me into one thing, if I may, Doug, that I think made a believer. I mean, I was always a believer. This made me a believer. And for, for those was I led the largest strike in the last 20 years in this IAFF as a new DVP. At the Burbank Airport, there's a bargaining unit, I think with 17 or 18 private sector workers. Now, we all know that it's against the law for us to strike, you know, people could die. Right. And, and being under the National Labor Relations Act, when a contract is expired, you could actually still, still strike and walk off the job as firefighters. It's really a, a, a loophole. But what we did was they kept extending the contract and this small bargaining unit, um, they, they were up against the fence. They have six members per day. They were trying to take the staffing from six to four. Wow. Um, and, and, and it was terrible. They don't have a defined benefit pension program. And they're really taking advantage for them because this airport was managed by a for-profit uh, you know, company naturally. So they were cutting to make profit. And, and the power that I saw, our IFF, our general president speaking with the with Secretary of Transportation, making sure that the FAA wasn't going to sign off on something, learning that this airport management company out of Florida, but owned by the Ontario Municipal Employee Retirement System up in up in Canada. Um, you know, I called Fred LeBlanc up and, and and I said, Hey, do we know anybody on this Omer's board? And then the president of Toronto, Big Frank Ramajano, he's the chairman of that. So we started getting all these different angles, but back to it is I called our teamsters and Ron Herrera and, and we had the joint council strike sanction approval by all of our locals. And, and literally it was, Hey, not one truck's going to go into that airport. The machinist said, we're not going to put fuel in those planes, the airline pilots association all the way. And, and it was coming together. And we ultimately uh, at about the stroke of, you know, two in the morning, probably four hours before 15 Southwest planes were going to take off. Um, we struck a deal and got them a great contract. And, and ultimately that company underestimated not only the IFF, but the power of labor. And we got our politicians involved and we had scab firefighters that were going to come in and the San Bernardino firefighters, you know, cut them their training off. So 
Um, that one was something that I'll never forget in my life. It made an impact. And, and also it was, show, it showed that um, whether you're 17 members or 6,000 members at Cal Fire, or when, you know, big local, that this IAFF is always here for you. Frank, I think uh, I think we're about to move into the next segment of our show, which is one of Doug and I's favorite show. And if you're going to be at the tip of the spear at the IAFF, we need to put you through the lightning round. OK, right. and and we got to see just how quick you're on your feet, because I, I mean, I see you and Doug both being bilingual and uh, you're leaning in here on our show. I love that. And you've got all these experiences. You got five time zones you were telling us covered in the DVP uh, IFF district out there. So. I think you'll do just fine, but I'm going to kick it off with our first question. We're going to ask you some questions, try to answer them as fast as you can, and we're going to just move to the next one. All right, you ready for number one? I'm ready for number one. Let's go. All right, Frank. What If there was one thing you haven't done yet in your life, what would that one thing be? Wow. Um, probably skydive, but I don't know if I'd ever, you know, have the backbone to actually dive now, you know? <laughs> You know, get a little, little too old for that, but um, you'd you'd sky you'd sky scooch off the side of the plane. Another yeah, words. maybe go up and encourage everybody else to jump and you know, go down and have a beer with them after. All right, favorite smell from childhood. Oh, um, right, coming in to uh, my um, on my father's side, my grandmother from Sicily. Um, Smelling that that pasta sauce and the meatballs, you know, that was without a doubt that had to have been it. Nice, Frank. Frank, if you could learn the answer to one question about your future, what would it be? It, it's, I didn't hear that last part, Mike. So uh, see, it's, this is this you know is what he's doing, Mike. He's trying this to buy time. Clever. We saw, buy we've time. seen that we've seen this maneuver yeah. before. All right, I'll repeat yes. it. Uh, we're going to blame that one on the internet. All right, Frank, if you could learn the answer to one question about your future, what would it be? Uh, you know, probably right now at this point in time would be I'd like to have the answer to the vote count of our uh, convention next week or in two <laughs> weeks. Um, we're looking good. Looks For all intents and purposes, looks like we're up by well over 100,000 pledge dedicated votes, but you never know what could happen. We have a uh, first time ever mail and all the delegates are getting things, a lot of moving parts, a lot could go wrong, you know, but I really like where we're at, but you know, at the end of the day, we're pushing hard. Um, and to a certain degree, I think like, uh, we all can't wait to, to hear, to hear that vote count read. So that's a good one. Okay. Uh, fair enough. This, this, this one's going to be deep. So warning has been issued. What mistake are you most proud of? Uh, a good that's a good uh it's a good question i would say that the tenacity that we fought for um i pissed a lot of people off in los angeles when we fought back the cell phone tower industry that was unilaterally putting cell phone towers up at our at our at our stations and um i don't know if it was either that or when we fought for parity pay with the cops which is kind of unheard of in california but you know, at the end of the day, I was president and fighting for my members. And, uh, you know, politically, uh, I couldn't understand it, but, but the cops were doing everything they could to, uh, you know, make sure that we didn't get parity pay with them. And I kind of used just that, that, that civil rights argument, just that, you know, dignify us. You know, if, if one of my members dies in the line of duty, um, how could you say we're worth two and a half percent less the spouse, the surviving spouses, the rest of their lives. And when you, when you, when you move a mountain like that, that, that hadn't been done for, for many years and you, and you tell politicians, Hey, if, if, you know, if you don't vote for this, then, then I have no choice other than to come after you. And, 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 and we always heal up, but uh, I'd say that and the cell phone tower industry fight, which I was probably more passionate about because ultimately that was our health and safety. And I'll tell you what, Revere, Massachusetts right now does not have cell phone towers at it because of the playbook that we did. And, and back to that fight, Doug, we used the electricians and I don't want to go too, too much, but we had a private sector company, electrician company that was coming to do work at our firehouse unilaterally. 
and I got our international brotherhood of teamsters. And I'll just say that, that, um, that private sector scab company didn't come in and do that, that, that work, you know, calling in that favor, but we went pretty hard. And sometimes your passion get the best of you. That's probably ultimately where I'm going to do in this answer. And when you get passionate, you, you know, you, you're fighting for your members, you fight hard. And um, as I've grown, you know, as I've grown and matured as well, um, sometimes you could get the right thing, the same results without maybe getting somebody's face or something like that. So um, that, that, that would be it, Doug. No, that, that's an excellent answer. And, you know, and it's true with age comes wisdom and it's like old bull, young bull. We won't go down that path, but you, you know, most people exactly. know the story. Um, but uh, you know what, Frank, in all honesty, there, there's, there, you, you have a, you have a lot of history, you have a lot of knowledge and we're not done. We need to do a follow-up uh, interview with you because, you know, like I said, if the, if the vote comes out, the members need to know more about Frank Lima. In fact, Mike, do you got a name for a show that maybe we can come up with? You know, we were actually thinking about, and by the way, Frank, that uncomfortable feeling in your belly right now, that, uh, you know, that's you successfully being on the other end of the lightning round. So nice job, brother. Well, that was well fun. Played. That was fun. Uh, yes, we would love to do, we'd love to do that. And Doug and I were sketching some things out. Well, we're, you know, a little bit of a, uh, have a little creative juices that flow every now and then we're thinking about maybe uh, Frank conversations with Lima. Right. Is that is that to have a little bit of a ring to it? Maybe I possibly. It. I'm not I don't know. We, we could see what we could see how we work out. But listen, we want to uh, thank you for taking time out of your your busy life and schedule. I know uh, just uh, one of the hats you wear uh, makes my head spin. Uh, so uh, certainly, I know you're a busy man, and we appreciate you coming on to tell your story. Uh, we're excited to uh, to to bring our audience in and and circle you and. And learn more about you as a, as a great leader. And thank you for all of the work that you have done and continue to do uh, for, for our brothers and sisters, not only in California, but uh, all over the IFF. So, uh, Doug, I'm going to send it over to you. And, and uh, actually, Frank, uh, I'm gonna, we should create some space here for you to, to, uh, to close or add anything else you wanted to add. Yeah, I, I can't thank you enough. And at the beginning, like I said, um, repetitive. But uh, thanks to the FPF and every Florida firefighter out there, I'm going to fight hard for you, everybody in the 12th district. I'm going to look over your money. Um, I was blessed to be an electoral college voter recently. We have a lot of big opportunity here. Um, a dear friend of mine that was a district attorney, then our attorney general, then our U.S. senator, and now going to be our vice president of the United States. And ultimately now, as a result of what happened in Georgia, the shot caller in the U.S. Senate and how close of the relationship that I have and that political influence and that financial background and that tenaciousness that I have and my ability to unite, I'm gonna bring that to not only Florida, California, but this entire IFF and help unite us, help um, make our members proud of us, help make our members believe in their finances, believe in their union and, and work with this next executive board. And I'm, I'm blessed to, to have had it this time. So thank you. All right, me. well, Frank, we wish you the best and folks remember you can follow us on youtube and instagram at doug and mike show uh, we'd like to give a shout out to our sponsor chief miller you can follow him on instagram at chief underscore miller have a great day